I'm thrilled to be here tonight, and it's an enormous pleasure for me to accept this honour from the UCD's Colleges of Business. Could I have ever have imagined as a young girl growing up in Clonsky, next door to the farm that became UCD, what an extraordinary university that it would turn out to be, and what an enormous contribution that it would make to business in Ireland, internationally, particularly here in the US, and of course, closer to my home, to my firm of PwC. And to those of you who studied there, just think about it for a second. Could you ever have imagined the opportunities that being part of that UCD team would give to you? A very special thanks to Sean Kelly from KPMG, <laughs> Chairman of the North American Advisory Board of UCD, and to all the members, and of course to the Dean for inviting me here this evening. But I have to say that I'm in absolute awe of the two other honorees, Paul and Gary O'Donovan, I've given up entirely. You're absolutely fantastic. You're the most amazing ambassadors, and I'm thrilled I've met you. Thanks to all of you for supporting this evening's benefit, and I know how your encouragement and assistance is actually so important in continuing the development of UCD and to business building those business links between Ireland and the US, especially through the programme you've talked about there in bringing the next generation of business leaders here to UCD. My own plan a long time ago, or at least my father's plan for me, was to study engineering in UCD. But I was a little bit young doing my leaving cert, and so I was sent off to do a secretarial course at the College of Commerce in Rathmines, where I met a whole load of guys who were studying for a course, and the objective of that course was to prepare young men for the world of business and I knew that I had found the road for me. So I succeeded in getting in. I think they took me as a bit of an experiment, but thankfully it all worked out just fine. And for those of you who are old enough to remember that days, mind you, not being in UCD didn't, didn't stop me from going regularly to the old disco in Belfield on a Saturday night. A bit later on, though, I did experience UCD at first hand when I was studying for the bar. And as Alan has said, my second daughter, Sinead, is a graduate both of the Quinn and the Smurfit School. She's now at Facebook in London. And my eldest daughter, Cleana, returned to college last year, and she's taking one of the courses I heard Kieran talk about uh, so eloquently last night. She's doing the UCD Origin Green Masters in Sustainability program, and she's currently on assignment in Tyson in Arkansas, and I'm going there in the morning. So I was delighted when uh, UCD's president, Andrew Deeks, asked me to join the advisory board. And as Kieran says, it's an absolutely fantastic university. The place of the business schools is phenomenal in terms of world rankings, but we're absolutely determined at that advisory board to make sure that whatever is needed to bring your university to wherever you think it needs to be, what the place that you would want it to have as a top ranking university, we're absolutely determined to support that. Ireland has probably of necessity in recent years underinvested in education. And you know, maybe there were good reasons, etc. But with an improving economy, it's now absolutely essential to our competitiveness as a nation that we invest in developing first class talent and in world class research at our universities. Fifty years ago, President Kennedy, speaking in Ireland, emphasized the importance of education, but also the crucial relationship between education and freedom. And I think those words are very, very true today. Lots of things influence our lives. And I was going to talk about three that have influenced me. Barbara Jones has just told me not to take up rowing. I think there's very little chance of that. <laughs> anyway, um, the opportunity of being, of having an education in business and as an accountant was one. And the enormous, ex the enormous effect of just experiencing business in, here in the US. And then obviously, thirdly, the development of Ireland as a location for foreign direct investment, particularly the IFSC. So I've been at PwC for 42 years and I've had done tons of things, etc. The firm was 120 years old and they had 70 male partners before they made me a partner 30 years ago as the first woman. Today, as you can see, we've 2,000 people, 100 partners, and thankfully 26 of them are women. But through all our history, we've had a very special relationship with UCD and a dynamic relationship. And this year, we recruited almost 150 students. You're right, the second um, biggest recruiter of students from UCD, but the first was the HSE. So, um, <laughs> so we've always been involved in the development of the business school. We share thousands of alumni. And of course, it's in our mutual interest that the business school thrives. 
I look back to being an accountant in the 70s and one of the few women who was studying. It was absolutely great fun. To be honest, women got preferred treatment. I never had to go and do stock takes on oil tanks in Dublin Bay on New Year's Eve. Um, if a partner was sending me out to a client, he checked, was it okay to send out a woman? Usually it was. And when I got there, the client was kind of curious to meet you. And he said, oh, sure, why don't you sit in the boardroom while you were doing your work rather than be down in some back room? And I was never paid less than a man for doing the role. However, we did learn very quickly, though, that if we women didn't ask for challenging jobs, they went to the lads. So that's always been my advice to women. Ask, ask, ask. We had fantastic fun, we met so many great characters, and we great, um, we really had tremendous friendships in the firm. And I'm looking around this room tonight, and I, if, I won't ask you to put your hands up, but I bet you loads of you have trained in an accounting firm, and wasn't it an absolutely great entry into business? And for many of you, a global passport, and of course it still is, is, is today, as you saw in our little video. So time progressed anyway, I moved along, and the great day dawned, and I was looking forward to going to a really big business lunch. I was a bit nervous now that I hadn't quite read enough newspapers and studied enough things to contribute to the conversation, but I needn't worry. The great men that were at the business lunch were discussing the price of electricity, and the final straw was for one of the hosts explained that he had gone home the previous day, in the middle of the day, and he had found the wife had the heat on. <laughs> it was the ultimate crime. The rest of the, rest of the lunch was felt trying to help that man recover from the traumatic experience. <laughs> so from then on, I never needed to worry about smoke-filled rooms or how to contribute to the conversation. I had two great sponsors, John Blake Dillon and Donal O'Connor, who went on to be our senior partner, who were always pushing me to progress. I'd had two daughters while I was a manager, Clean and Sinead, as I've just mentioned, and then John called me in one day and he said, are you planning to continue at work? I said, hold on a minute here. What are we asking me this kind of a daft question for? Surely, to God, my actions have spoken louder than any words. And he told me to calm down. He said, if I'm going to ask those other lads to make you a partner, I have to tell them that I've asked you and you've told me that you're going to continue working. So again, another big lesson for me, don't assume that your employer knows what you want, particularly for women, you need to tell them. They're not telepathic. You need to absolutely tell them. And John and Donald have always remained my trusted advisors, and I've gathered more over the years since, and of course some here in, some special people here in the US, and they've been a great source of advice to me. And that was another lesson, make sure that you have your own personal board of directors. Now, like lots of you, I have loads of family in the US, my granddads went to San Francisco, my brother emigrated, etc. Uh, and on my first experience was on my J-1Bs in San Francisco, where I absolutely had a fantastic experience, and it really gave me what we call the wings to fly. And then fast forward to my 32nd birthday when partners asked me to become a PwC partner. They also asked me to take an interest in inward investment from America. I just thought all my birthdays had come together and in loads of ways they probably had. I look back now and I can see that my professional and personal goals were all aligned. I loved the US way of doing business. I saw a whole new dimension to networking, to building relationships and particularly the power of teamwork. I love the drive of US businessmen although in the early days I did meet a few business women as well. And I learned so much, and hopefully I put that into practice at home. The first St. Patrick's Day that I was here in New York, an Irish lawyer invited one of my partners and I to his club for lunch, the Knickerbocker Club. I really thought I had made the big time now. And it was all grand until we got near the place, and then he explained to me that I had to go back in the side entrance because I was a woman. I was allowed to have my lunch, fabulous lunch, and I had to go back out by the same back entrance. So to be honest, business in the US wasn't really any different to Ireland all those number of years ago. I'm glad everybody's moved on. So my partners and I spent loads of time on the road in the US and we visited loads of US corporations. We weren't always just in glamorous places like New York or staying with John, whom I see over there who's been looking after me forever, and Silicon Valley. And we told the unfolding story of Ireland as a location in Europe from which to do business. And of course, the IFSC, which was just gathering fantastic momentum and creating so many jobs. I'd like to acknowledge my good friend and your board member, Tom Codd, who can't be here with us this evening. But he and his PwC colleagues helped generations of people like me as we focused our endeavours on trying to build great links between 
Ireland and this absolutely wonderful country. And it's been my privilege to work with such wonderful people. And thank you to Tom and also to Martin, Rob, Grace and Mark, who are here uh, this evening. Always there to help, of course, was the IDA and its tremendous marketing machine and our great council, Barbara. And of course, the other professional firms, all supporting inward investment and all working together as Team Ireland. But Team Ireland needs a lot of help just at the moment. In this audience, I know that you understand how important it is that we continue to have a first-class environment in Ireland, it would be it regulatory, tax, infrastructure, talented people, and in numerous other areas. But this is an uncertain time. The Brexit decision has huge implications for Ireland. And while there might be some opportunities to attract business, competition is really, really intense. Apple is discussed in all the boardrooms of the world, and the tax code is, as the tax code changes through BEPS and the OECD, etc., everything's going to change. And can I encourage you to keep yourselves posted on these important topics, and most of all, to continue the vital role that you play as the great ambassadors that you are for Ireland. Thank you. Alan, I'm sorry the list was a bit long, but anyway, I'm glad to have been able to contribute a small bit to a couple of external boards. For me, that seat was so different to being an audit partner in PwC, and it really helped me to understand a lot more about business. No doubt, sometimes I was appointed because I was a woman, and I'm absolutely clear, sometimes I didn't have the qualifications, but one learns. And I, it was a great experience, and I'd recommend it. And that brings me along to the 30% Club, where we have over 150 organisations in Ireland now supporting this business. It's a business-led global concerted programme of change. And we're trying to share best practice as to how you would build a pipeline of female executives, but through voluntary means. I mean, business needs to use all its talent, but the only way we're going to progress is if men and women work together. So at UCD, the President, the Dean and Orla Nugent, whom I'm delighted to see here, have been hugely supportive to the 30% Club, both in helping our programmes and awarding an annual 30% scholarship to successful female applicants at UCD. So together with you, to use your own logo, we are making women visible and we're imagining better business together. As I finish up, I might just tell you about my two other children who were born after I became a partner. My son Dara is a business graduate. He's at home at the moment, but not for long, because I suspect, like many of you, he'll be in Soldier's Field um, in Chicago very shortly. And here tonight with me is my youngest daughter, Fanula Finn, as she calls herself. She's a business graduate, and she's working here in fintech and absolutely adores it. So it's said that a, a desk is a dangerous place from which to view the world. I made sure that I was out and about from behind mind, and I'm so glad that PwC enabled me to have an international career. I've been blessed to have had a great education, wonderful professional and client experiences, and have had a very supportive family. And maybe also to have been in the right place at the right time, particularly tonight in receiving from UCD this lovely honour. Excuse me, poor old Kieran, I'd be horrified at my Irish. <laughs> and I went to school for Rita. Thoas are on Ahas are a meal boy, I guess, I guess, Bannock Cliff Galair.